Welcome to another session of our management and leadership uh, course. And now we want to talk uh, a little bit about uh, planning. Um, we talked about uh, in the last session, we talked about decision making and I was explaining that there are different kind of decision uh, conditions, uh, decision under certainty, risk and uncertainty. And we were looking at different kind of rules such as a base rule and Val rule and Savage Nian's rule, etc, etc. And now we arrive at, um, at planning. What is planning about? Um, planning is, of course, very, very important. Sometimes um, the question is there, why should you plan? Because um, the world is, uh, like we said before, the world is determined by the uh, acronym VUCA. It's a VUCA world. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. So why should you make plans which may, may be obsolete overnight? Uh, we'll come to this in a couple of minutes. Um, so planning is a very, very important managerial activity. And um, you remember the um, functional approach to management um, made by Fayol, who was uh, talking about management is POLC, planning, organizing, leading, controlling. So P um, is not for panic, it's for planning. Um, it is about defining the organization's goals. Uh, which can be organization wide, which can be uh, related to a certain kind of product category or department or can be related to a certain kind of um, manager. Uh, so individual goals, of course. Um, so you need um, the establishment of an overall strategy to achieve those corporate objectives. And you have to develop a comprehensive set of plans to integrate and coordinate organizational work. We'll see how this works because we said, what is a manager? We said, now this is a bit uh, recapturing that a management is, or a manager is somebody who's working with and through other people in order to achieve company's objectives. So therefore you need plans to integrate and coordinate this work activities of the employees. There are basically two types of planning. One, informal, which is not written down. It's not determined. It's more short-term focus. Um, and formal plans, so such as a marketing plan. So it's written, it's specific, and usually there is a long-term focus, such as marketing plan is for the next three to five years, probably. Why do managers plan now? Why is it important? There are changes in the environment. Yes, of course. However, um, if you don't plan, um, you don't have goals that may be broken down to the individual employees. And if you don't have goals, um, you, have, uh, you have an issue because goals do have different kind of functions. And um, let's look at the functions of goals first um, in order to better understand how this works. Or what, are, what are functions of goals? Why do we need goals? First, a goal is providing information to the employees. So there is an information function for the employees. Because if you have a goal, for example, um, if you're Daimler and you're looking at Tesla and your goal is for the next, uh, I don't know, three to five years to increase the percentage of electrical power driven cars from, I don't know what the number is right now, from 2% to 25%. Um, that is not only a goal, but it also tells um, the employees, it informs the employees and the stakeholder uh, about the strategic direction of the, um, of the organization. So it's a, it has an information function. But it also has goals always have a motivation function, motivation function, a motivation function, because we know that from sports. Um, if you're in, um, in, uh, in serious sports, for example, in athletics, um, so uh, track and field or football or whatever, um, or you want to lose weight, um, that is also a good example. And you don't have any goals, you just say, oh, I want to lose weight. So that, 
that that is not very motivating but it is always best to have a kind of a goal as a um, as a point of um, of status you want to achieve you want to accomplish you want to arrive at of course goals need to be and we come to that uh, in a couple of minutes um, goals need to be smart goals always need to be smart they need to be uh, specific measurable um, uh, uh, um, um, what is that um, aligned yes aligned or ambitious realistic and time bound smart goals um, so if the goal for example is um, is too strong it's too high you cannot you can accomplish that it is also demotivating but if goals are right set if they are following the smart principles um, they are motivating people um, then what what are goals doing they're coordinating coordinating the work activities of the employees because if you have a work um, uh, a goal and um, your work is going around that goal so you, you want to accomplish this kind of a goal because uh, usually there's a certain kind of bonus attached to it if you accomplish this kind of goal so that is a coordination function because if you don't have any kind of goals it happened to me when I was young and I was hired at the um, from the Deutsche uh, Aktiengesellschaft when I was working for the DEA um, there were uh, during those days there were goals specific goals for uh, sales staff yes but uh, for marketing managers in the central department uh, in the headquarters there were no, no specific goals I was responsible for everything you can eat and drink at the um, at the shop there but there was not not a goal of in, um, of, of my myself of increasing the goal of increasing turnover by 25 percent or by uh, arriving at a certain kind of profitability uh etc etc i just had a job description and at shell there were very very specific later there were very specific goals for every individual in the organization so that is about coordination if you don't have any kind of goals people are of course working but um then their work is not focused on the achievement and accomplishment of uh, individual goals and the last thing um of course goals have a controlling function controlling function controlling because if um, you have goals usually what you do is you say okay we have um, for example as is status and then we have a to be status so the um, soll und ist so you make a comparison so this is the goal where you want to go and currently we are at this kind of a stage and um, it gives you controlling function the controlling function being is the person or is the activity um, of the um, of the manager of the um, of the employees is it really um, on the right track in so far as the goals which are being set by the top management are accomplished or not and in addition to that um, managers engage in planning to like we said we said that before provide direction so this is about coordination function reduce the impact of change i think this is going hand in hand Minim minimize waste and redundancy um because this is also involved in the coordination function so you're ensuring that the people are working the employees are working on projects and carrying out tasks which help the organization of course to accomplish these kind of goals and set the standards to facilitate control so that that's the controlling function here as well but but we added other factors as well so i want to add that to uh, to robinson coulter i want to add here this uh like i said very important motivational function and information function as well um that's a little bit also in this providing direction so uh different kind of uh plans there are uh, we talked about that before um <clears throat> what do you say formal plans and informal plans but there are also um when when it comes to the breadth of plans there are strategic and operational plans that is a quite a very important distinct distinguishment uh and distinction here strategic plans 
it's about strategy of course it's more long term and operational is really how are you getting uh, getting that implemented into operationals this is uh, usually operational plans is usually for one year so what kind of activities do you need to do in order to arrive or to comply or to uh, to meet these strat strategic goals which are set uh, strategic goals is like for example you're saying oh we want to become uh, if you're Adidas we want to overtake Nike um, in in basketball in terms of global market share within the next five years so that may be a strategic plan time frame like I said strategic is more long term operational short term within one year specific um, how, how special specified is it how special is it uh, a strategic plan is just describing a direction it's not very specific so you're just saying okay this is our strategic goal in this line of business for example and operation is more specific in order to get there within three five four years we have to do this now or the first year we have to um, to carry out this kind of task so the um, operational plans there are mo much more specific frequency of use strategic is more single use and the operationals is more uh, is more standing so strategic you, you don't change that too often but operational you do um, every year you change that yeah we don't need that that is additional description here again uh it's it's just uh, to to uh to understand better what is the difference between directional or specific um like i mentioned before directional plans are strategy plans strategic directions um you just vaguely describe this is where i want to go but but not how you get there and specific specific plans describe precisely um, what you need to do in terms of operations in order to get there. Now, goal setting. Um, that is very important also when it comes to motivation, when it comes to leadership, uh, because we are on a leadership course as well, management and leadership. Um, traditionally, um, objective setting is that top management has different kind of objectives. For example, we need to improve the company's performance. Oh, that is very vague. Uh, that is very directional so and then these goals are broken down here so divisions managers objectives I want to see significant improvement in this divisions profits and the department manager may be saying oh, increase profits regardless of the means and here the individual employee don't worry about quality just work fast um, now basically those kind of goals in the past they have been set more or less in isolation but what um what we uh, need to need to do is of course we need to cascade down plans um if there is a top management objective and plan this this needs to be cascaded downwards so it needs to relate all the uh, the plans and objectives of the subsequent layers of hierarchy need to feed into the um, top management objectives and plans this is for example what you can see here working with organizational objectives here um, provide service to customers provide reliable products ah, you see this is very much generic it's very much strategic uh, how can this look like for example um, and here you can see that these top management goals are then becoming more specific as, as they are cascaded downwards down the hierarchy levels so for the production people this means keep uh, keep costs of goods no more than 50 percent of sales for example or increase productivity of labor by three percent uh, every year um, or for the um, yeah, for the finance people, borrowing should not exceed fifty percent of asset, maximum tax write-off, etc., etc. So I'm not going through all through all that. But the logic is that you cascade goals downwards, and a very important leadership principle in this framework is, uh, and I'm strongly con convinced um, of its power, is uh, what we call MBO, management by objectives. Management by objective means that 
you manage people by providing objectives, individual objectives to them. So this is, these are specific performance goals that are jointly determined by the line manager and the employee. So uh, at Shell, it worked like that. So um, at the end of the year, you sit, you're sitting down, everybody is sitting down with a line manager. And even when I was working in London in the global st um, staff department there, uh, strategy and portfolio, um, I was sitting down with my line manager and she was uh, saying, okay, for next year, um, this is where we need to go as the entire department. And for you, this implies these kind of goals. And then you're discussing that. You're discussing that. So she's giving you or he's giving you a certain kind of individual goals. And then you also can challenge her or him and say, okay, th this is a bit, I don't know, too ambitious, for example. This is a bit too ambitious. This is over ambitious probably because last year, look at last year, we made different kind of turnover. And, but now doubling the turnover seems a bit um, too ambitious. And what you, what you need to do is then you sign off after you talked about the goals, the individual goals, you sign off the goals. It's a little, uh, it's a kind of contract. So it's really a very formal process. And then you work, you're going to work. And then in mid of, mid of the year, you have what we call a mid-year review, a mid-year review, mid-year review. And in the middle of the year, um, somebody, uh, you're sitting down with the line manager as, as well, uh, again, and she's looking at the numbers to say, okay, what was the goal for the, for the entire year? And what have you accomplished so far? So are you on track basically? Or do we have to um, change the goals in some way? Do, did certain kind of assumptions not, uh, not, work, not work out fine properly, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Um, so you may be adjusting the goals. Um, so you decide whether you are still on track or not. And then um, you have uh, an end-year review, uh, review, what we call uh, goals and performance appraisal, goals and performance appraisal. And then people are looking at um, the year-end results and uh, you get uh, a so-called score. You get a score whether you accomplish the goals or not. Uh, and that is what we call IPF, individual performance factor, IPF, individual performance factor. So if you have, simply speaking, if you have a, a individual performance factor of 1.0, you accomplish the goals um, like you should do. Um, if you have a IPF of 1.2, you're an overachiever. And this IPF is multiplied with a, uh, with a so-called business result factor as well. And later you get a bonus. But why is that important? And why is that in interesting and useful? Um, not the bonus is important, um, but what we, what you needed to do if um, you uh, have a process like that, this MBO process is um, every time uh, you're changing jobs, you apply for a new job and you want to be promoted, you have to state your last three years IPF score. So um, if you're applying for a job now um, and you, you want to move into the job in uh, 2020, you have to um, state the IPF. What was your IPF in 2017, uh, 18, 19, or uh, yeah, 17, 19, uh, 17, 18, 19, or 18, 19, 20? You have to state. You have to state that. So what is the um, IPF here of the IPF score? So you see that um, that is very, very important. It keeps people motivated. It keeps people coordinating their work activities to accomplish th those kind of goals because the progress is always towards the accomplishment of goals. And this pro uh, process and progress is always periodically reviewed. So like I said, it's normally it's, uh, it's done um, in, in the mid year, sometimes depending on the goals, in, in sales, for example, it's done on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis or on a monthly basis. And rewards are allocated on the basis of progress towards the goals. Like I just mentioned, you get a, uh, you get a bonus. But then what is more important, like I said, is not the bonus, but it's making a good IP, uh, IPF score gives you better career opportunities. So what are the key elements of an MBO uh, process here? 
go specificity oh difficult word for me so um that is what what i the the first s in the acronym right the smart right this s smart goals need to be specific because if goals are not specific um like for example successful intro or successful launch of our new kind of suv vehicles in the indian market what a successful launch it's not very specific it's not very specific uh, does it mean that you're selling 10,000 cars or 100,000 cars that's not very specific um in general it's a bit like participative uh, decision making process because um these goals are not just top down goals they are just simply broken down but goals are discussed with the uh, with the employee so the line manager sits down with the employee discusses the goals you get um performance evaluation and you get feedback and you may, may even challenge um whether the goals are over ambitious or not so what are the steps in this typical mbo program i, I was describing that um uh, already so um MBO for next normal operating period begins. So that is usually in uh, November, December, and you're starting to set to sit down with the line manager and to talk about the goals for next year. Then organizational objectives are being reviewed. So this is the overall goal that is laid down for a department, for the uh, organization, for the whole entire enterprise, and then these goals are cascaded downwards. So your line manager is probably telling you, oh, these are my goals for the entire department um, and this entire business section, for example, all retail, I have in this kind of goals. And for you, this implies that worker objectives are being set. And then there's continuous uh, progress monitoring and um, also, there's a, a, a performance evaluation that is happening uh, in between, probably, like we said, um, there's a mid-year review and then there's a final review and uh, the rewards, for example, a certain kind of bonus is given based on the performance execution that has been evaluated. So that is usually how it works. And I was mentioning this acronym before. Goals always need to be smart, specific, measurable, aligned or ambitious you can also say ambitious um, aligned means they're um, all aligned so they're cascaded downs uh, you, you, ha you have a common understanding with your line manager as well as to the goals they are they're realistic that is also very important that they're really realistic not over ambitious and there are time bounds you need a time specification for the goal because if you just say in a successful i don't know introduction to the market of our new suv in the indian market and saying okay good <laughs> probably in 10 years time you're successful what <laughs> however you define successful so that, that is not very specific and the time uh, time specification is lacking so these are um the foundations here of uh, of planning that uh, you have in management very very um very very broadly speaking but basically, this is a diff difference between strategic operation plans and very important what we are using very, very often in management leadership um, in the organizations is these MBO. Uh, I'm not aware of any organization not using that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, all kind of organizations, Unilever, L'Oreal, Deutsche Bank, uh, Adidas, Nike, they're all using this MBO principle. Um, to to lead those people to coordinate their work activities basically like what I said this information function controlling function of of course as well as coordinating um, function and uh, motivation function so the, these are the four functions which we uh, which we laid down which are very very important ah no I think it's gone because I took away the uh, the whiteboard here okay so Got it, uh, got it done. Thanks very much and um, see you for another session then next week. But of course, as always, I stay in the line. Cheers. Thank you and bye bye.